All right, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to see, see you out in the virtual land here. I'm Rob Lawson, State Conservationist with NRCS, and we are having a uh, this virtual component of a of a state tech committee meeting. Really, it's it's all focused around the Inflation Reduction Act. We wanted to get out and share out with everyone on the state tech committee the very latest of where we stand for the FY23 sign up, uh, what we're looking ahead for 24, and really give this opportunity for you all to provide any feedback that you have um, for um, for us here at. Uh, at NRCS. So really, that's the idea of this. Um, we're still going to have our scheduled state tech committee meeting on June 8th in the afternoon. The invite, I believe, has been sent out. And so we are still uh, continuing with that. But we just wanted to spend uh, here this afternoon an opportunity, spend time to step through the very late, like I said, the very latest on where we're at for this sign up for this year and get any feedback that we have from our partners. So um, you can see that we have the agenda um, on the screen. Um, really, the plan is uh, if if you have uh, when you when we get to the feedback part, if you want to raise your hand and uh, share your name and uh, who you're with uh, when we are um, when you're asking the questions or feedback, that would be greatly appreciated. But really, um, I just want to turn it over to Brad, and we will get into uh, the details for uh, for this for this year. Okay, thank you, Rob. Um, I'll go ahead and try to bring up my uh, PowerPoint. Just give me just a second. OK, um, yeah, so as Rob indicated, uh, we just want to start this with with a kind of a general overview of the IRA again and uh, kind of get get focused on what IRA is a little bit. And then uh, at the end, I'll give you a few uh, statistics of what we did in FY23. And then uh, We'll open it up and get your comments for moving forward um, for FY24. So, Inflation Reduction Act. So again, this was was signed into law in August of 2022. So it's it's pretty brand new for everybody. And a review of the funding, which was provided uh, through the IRA, uh, 19 and a half billion in additional funds to the existing conservation programs. And uh, these funds, uh, the IRA does not create any new programs, but it just uh, utilizes the existing programs uh, for climate efforts. As you can see, you know, about 8.4 billion additional for EQIP uh, through the life of this uh, act, of almost 5 billion for RCPP, uh, three and a quarter billion for CSP, one and 1.4 billion for ASEP for the easements, and a billion for the conservation technical assistance. So that funding begins in this fiscal year. So we've already, um, we're implementing those funds already. And all of the funds that we obligate have to be spent uh, by September 30th of 2031. And the difference there is from some of our other uh, allocations is that usually we have to have them obligated uh, by the end of the fiscal year, but then the contracts continue uh, you know, after that to, to be implemented. So these uh, contracts have to be uh, obligated and all the funds spent by September 30th of 2031. So this year uh, for Nebraska, our portion uh, for CSP, we received $4.7 million, uh, and we're in the process of assessing applications and, and getting those obligated. And EQIP, we received an additional $2.4 million, um, and, and we're in the same 
uh, process of getting those uh, assessed and, and obligated. So this uh, IRA is for all producers, uh, all sizes. You know, there's no limits on, on the size restrictions of the operations, location, type of operations. If you're uh, an eligible producer uh, in the Farm Service Agency system, uh, you're eligible for IRA, just like uh, regular Farm Bill uh, programs. And this uh, IRA just uh, gives us an opportunity to expand the support that focuses on climate change mitigation. So uh, the purpose of, of IRA again is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve carbon storage. So to do that, uh, there has been a list of practices, what we call core practices, which have been approved that can be used in, in these uh, contracts for the IRA contracts. So there's been a review of the different practices and if, if they can relate to any of the uh, criteria for greenhouse gas emissions, carbon storage, then those those uh, four practices are the only ones that we can use in these IRA uh, contracts. And all of this is put out in the Federal Register notice back in November of, of 2022. So we have the 2023 list of, of uh, core practices which we can use. And I think part of the input that that we're still taking, the agency is still taking, FPAC is taking, is to see if there are additional uh, practices which could be added to this uh, core list. So in addition to the core practices, uh, which must, every contract has to have at least one of the core practices or only core practices, we can also then uh, include what we call facilitating practices. And, and some examples of facilitating practices, basically any practice which is needed to uh, also be included to get full implementation of that core practice. If it has uh, climate smart uh, uh, values to it, then we can include those and that's determined through the planning process. As an example, on tree and shrub establishment, facilitating practices could include a site preparation, mulching, micro irrigation, a pasture and hayland hay planting, 512 is part of the core practices. So facilitating practice, practices there could be access control, uh, herbaceous weed treatment, Waste separation facility 632, which is a core practice. Uh, facilitating practices could include waste transfer and pumping plants. Prescribed grazing is, is a uh, very common practice here in the state with all of our grazing lands. So facilitating practices to 528 would be such as watering facilities, stream crossing, fences, livestock pipelines. So um, anything that would facilitate implementation of that prescribed grazing is eligible. Upland wildlife habitat management, 645, uh, access control and fence. So those are just some examples of facilitating practices for the core practices. So we have distributed the list of uh, climate smart ag and forestry practices and if there are any questions on that, you know, we can pull that list up, you know, anytime here today, or we can send it out to you. And so, in addition to climate smart, you know, there's other benefits that we get from these practices that that we should recognize. Uh, for example, soil health, water quality, you know, pollinator habitat, air quality. Those are all other. Those are all benefits. Uh, which come from these practices. But just to emphasize again that uh, these practices, other practices which aren't on that core list are not eligible to be in an IRA contract 
And so we just need to keep that in mind. Only the core practices are eligible. So IRA is for everyone, um, all interested producers. Uh, there are no exclusions. And we want to point out that uh, this might be an opportunity to get in and get some assistance. So if you've never applied, uh, we need to get the word out that this is available. Um, there may be funding available now, which we we had limited funding before. So uh, that's part of the the effort here with our outreach uh, to try to reach everyone and let them know that just because they applied before, that doesn't mean that they can't come in and apply again. And anyone uh, would point out that if they're wondering how to apply, you just simply have to. Um, sign a CPA 1200. It's an application form. But if anybody really is interested, uh, you can find the contacts on on our websites and uh, get your local contact. You can go into the local field office and sign up. So it's a continuous application process. Uh, as with all of our programs, you can apply anytime throughout the year. This year we did have for FY23, we had a March 31st application cutoff date. And I'll I'll go through those numbers here in just a little bit. So there was a March 17th application cutoff date for the easements for ASAP. And uh, and then their RCPP, uh, there will be another funding opportunity announcement for RCPP, which should uh, should come out any day now. So very soon, so we'll be watching for that. So here in Nebraska, um, like I said, March 31st was our application cutoff date. For our EQIP allocation of 2.4 million, we got 280 applications eligible for IRA. And eligible applications include those core practices. For CSP, uh, we received the 4.7 million, as I mentioned, and we currently have 75 eligible applications for CSP. So in both cases, you know, our applications, we have more applications that we will be able to fund. And so, uh, uh, so that's good news. That's something to look forward to for next year, to, you know, as far as uh, estimating what we're going to get. So we got plenty of applications for the funds. And then on the ASAP, um, all of the applications for ASAP, they're being analyzed at, at the national level. And then those which, which will be pre-approved, um, every state will receive funding for those that are pre-approved on the national level. So here in Nebraska, we had eight total ASAP applications of four WREs and four ALE GSS applications. Um, and we have not heard which ones have been pre-approved yet, but we expect that to come very soon. So, so getting prepared for FY24, and that's part of the purpose of today's call, is to get some input on, on any potential uh, changes or tweaks uh, to to IRA for FY24. So we are going through looking at, at our policies, procedures, and things that we may be able to tweak or make some adjustments to for FY24. And I just listed just a few example uh, items that, that we're looking at uh, for FY24 and beyond. The one thing that we have in place is most of you know is we have payment caps on certain practices. For instance, cover crops, um, we have a payment cap that would allow about 200 acres of a cover crop uh, to be applied for three years in a contract. So um, we can adjust those payment caps. Um, we can we can increase them, we can decrease them, we can remove them, whatever. Another thing we're taking a look at is our payment rates. Um, and this fits right into the current 
current process or the timelines for payment schedules. Uh, you know, the payment schedule process starts early in the year, about January, and then continues uh, completely throughout the year, ending in about September. So this is really good timing to to talk about um, what what are the payment rates uh, the adjustments should we make? You know, considering the additional IRA funding, there may be some practices that that we we think we can have a higher payment rate, and and maybe increase the the payment cap uh, on that. So it's definitely a consideration uh, looking at what we uh, think that could be coming down the line in future years for funding. And again, uh, you know, concentrating on those practices, which are the, the climate smart, those four practices. Those are being considered. Um, other things to consider with the additional funding yeah, are the, uh, the application deadlines, you know, the application cutoff dates, uh, you know, should they all be the same for IRA and Equip General and CSP Classic, for example? Um, ranking deadlines, you know, for our staff, that all comes into play with uh, trying to obligate these these additional funds, and then the obligation deadlines. And so those are some things we're we're looking at considering. And you know, we we have received input from all 23 of the local work groups. Um, on these ranking obligation deadlines, payment rates, so uh, payment caps, and that, um, and, and there were, was some consideration in a lot of cases, maybe all cases, for the IRA funds, but uh, feel free to, to send in more uh, comments if, you know, after today's meeting or if you get to thinking about it. So we're still in that process of setting up our our policies for FY24. So um, a lot of good input there and, and we would take more. Another example of, of things of, that uh, we may make some tweaks to is, is our uh, current policy where we, uh, which we have in place where an applicant that has been uh, completing a management practice like cover crops or no-till Previously, uh, and they reapplied, then they would be put in a low priority category. So, is that a, is that a policy that we want to change now that there's additional funds uh, to be utilized and and maybe a desire to get more acres of cover crops or no-till? Uh, just something to be considered there. Um, there are other low priority criteria that we currently have in our our ranking. Um, a policy. So we're looking at, at those kinds of changes and, and, and many others. So these are just a few examples that I throw out there of potential uh, tweaks or modifications for FY24 to uh, target the IRA funds and uh, and how to do that in a way that you know we're targeting uh, greenhouse gas and, and uh, climate smart uh, activity. The other part of this is uh, uh, staffing considerations. Uh, there is a significant amount of technical assistance funds out there. And so obviously if we're going to potentially double, triple, or even more of uh, the financial assistance in the future years, that, that takes uh, personnel uh, to get that applied. So. So there's a lot of discussion on, you know, how are we going to get these uh, funds applied out there? So, you know, NRCS can only do a certain amount uh, staffing up. And uh, so there's discussions about, you know, potentially cooperative agreements with uh, partners and those, those kinds of options out there. And so that's another uh, category that we're seeking input. Uh, you know, there was an opportunity, uh, a request for for information, uh, which went out last fall. And I think that ended in December, where anyone could go in and and submit comments and recommendations. 
that is is no longer active. Uh, but at this time, you know, we're taking any comments up to. You send them up here to uh, the state office to Rob or myself or uh, Tammy Nordman, uh, however you want to get them. And then all of this will be uh, discussed and uh, action will be taken, you know, using the, you know, this committee, state technical committee, and then our subcommittees uh, is where we'll, we'll have even more of that discussion. We have some subcommittees uh, coming up. Our next subcommittee is our EQIP subcommittee meeting, which is May 31st. Uh, we have another water quality subcommittee, which is June 16th. And then well, there's a forestry uh, subcommittee meeting, which is uh, June 13th and 14th in North Platte. So, so those are just some of the subcommittee meetings that we already have scheduled. But uh, anyway, the idea here is that we we uh, gather your comments, gather your recommendations, uh, and then we will consolidate that and and then utilize the state technical committee format to. Uh, See if there's, you know, see what we can we can do to implement any of those uh, uh, recommendations. So that's about all I've got uh, for now. So I think at this point we just open it up to all of you. Um, and so this this is the time where if you have any comments or questions or anything, if you could. Raise your hand and then we'll we'll call on you. And then at that point, if you would could uh, turn your camera on and unmute, and then we'll just uh, we'll have a conversation. So that's what we've got for the rest of the day. So uh, can we get somebody that was on the phone? Can I figure out who they were? And then there's another one at the very top also. Uh, that is Gomes. Yes, I don't remember that is either. Oh, no, that's probably oh. Steve Goins from uh, Department of Environment and Energy. Yeah, I'm Thank here. You. And then Hello. who's on the phone? Yep, this the, is Mike Crosley. I'm the, whoop, excuse me. Nope, Mike good, Crosley, I'm the land manager. Was there, was there a number at the bottom too? So. Was there a phone number at the bottom? Uh, 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 I don't think I have it ready though, but so hold on, you have to go back down. You're good. You're good. This is uh, Mike, Mike Crosley. I'm the land manager for the San Tisu tribe. We got you, Mike. Thank you. Okay. Tim, yeah. Tim has the same. Tim has a question. So you're looking for comments on on um, ideas thrown out there. I, I guess I'd support Jim Macy, director of uh, environment and energy, and um, of course with the uh, we're we're doing the climate pollution reduction act uh, grant with EPA. Um, be supportive of um, looking at cover crops on on land and maybe maybe I'd like to know if uh, how how many um, participants uh, currently are are doing that and then you know would that be beneficial for everybody if you if you let them extend doing that keep doing it um, through through your payments and maybe you could open up more opportunity for other people to to try cover crops that that'd be a good uh, GHG uh, land management practice yeah that's that's it Great comment, uh, Jim. Um, as far as the number of applications for cover crops, we'd have to look that up. It is a very popular practice, I would say. Uh, it's a it's a number one uh, practice as far as numbers of applications and that per year. So it's very popular already. But uh, you know, currently uh, they can, in certain cases, they can go up to five years now with a cover crop. Generally, it's a three year contract. Uh, one thing we could consider with, with IRA is uh, we can now do a five year contract on a management practice. So that's one thing we could 
expand on the current applications uh, going to five years. And, uh, and then I mentioned on the management practices where previous policy was if, if an applicant had already applied management practice, they would have to go to a higher level of management and cover crops a good example of, you know, if you had a single species, then if, if a producer agreed to go to a multi-species mix, then they then they would be eligible to to apply. We we could now expand that to letting them reapply and then they could apply cover crop on fields which have which aren't currently uh, in cover crops, for example. So that that could expand a quite a, a lot of acres, make them eligible if we do that. So that's one thing we're looking at. So um, yeah, good. Good come. Anything else, Jim? Uh, just uh, as we work through our uh, work plan on on that uh, over, we've got we've got something to do at the end of the month, and then then we'll be be working um, more in depthly on on a work plan throughout the year. I think we've got a year and a half to get things done. Um, probably nice to have some um, statistics of where producers are now with regard to these types of land management practices and and then looking towards the future of maybe a future incentive goal or, or something like that to where where we think we could get people to in, in uh, future uh, practice. OK. <clears throat> Thanks for letting me uh, chime in there. OK, uh, Tim. Kowski, you had your hand up first, I think. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Uh, first of all, I appreciate all of your work in this. Uh, when the Biden administration come out with their 3030, uh, I need to back up. First of all, I am Tim Kalkowski. I'm with the Nebraska Grazing Lands Coalition, and then I'm also a producer. And the Nebraska Grazing Land Coalition, right when the Biden 3030 come out, met with what we would call a group of ag influencer and ag industry leaders. And we we met with the discussion about what can we do in Nebraska and be at the forefront? You know, we felt we needed to be at the table with the Biden administration telling them what we do very well in Nebraska, uh, especially with the climate smart. Um, the problem is we kind of hit a roadblock because at that time the Ricketts administration was pretty anti anything easement. So then, you know, they connected the Biden 3030 deal with easements. And I don't think that's come to fruition at this point. But with that in mind, I really I'm thinking of the drought situation that we're in in Nebraska. I really like the ideas of the water facilities and the cost fencing because we're going to have to do that to continue our grazing lands and and do what you want with the climate smart. I would suggest and I'm using our ranch as an example. I think cover crops are key. I would think that maybe we would want to consider interceding into different uh, fields, whether that be old alfalfa, like in our case, we've got old alfalfa fields that we have not been able to uh, to put into something else because we we were in a drought and we we knew we couldn't raise anything. But if we start getting moisture, I think interceding to produce some growth in in old alfalfa fields or whatever the case may be could be uh, very important. I also wonder about payment for deferred grazing or lower stocking rates. Um, this grass after two to three years of drought is extremely stressed. And if you've been listening to the wheat, I think our grass is similar to the wheat. They're telling everybody the wheat's gonna be very short because it's so stressed that it's gonna create, you know, a head. And it's just going to be short. I think that's what we're going to see in our grass. And we're going to have to defer some grazing or something. Um, riparian buffers, I put on my list. There's a lot of places that have riparian buffers 
that I think would be very beneficial to climate smart. Uh, I'm talking, uh, you know, trees, your oaks and your ashes, they're taking in a lot of carbon uh, along creeks or rivers or draws uh, that can be protected or fenced out or different things, you know, that should get credit. And then lastly, and I think most importantly is, is there points or credits or payments for people that are willing to do educational opportunities or tours? I think we have a story to tell in Nebraska, and I think we need to tell our story. And that goes right back to everything you said with soil health, water quality, wildlife enhancement. But we need to let all peoples and in, in all administrations know what we do well in Nebraska, and that's protect our natural resources. And by doing that, then we're doing the climate smart and everything that that this act is trying to do so i would ask that maybe you put some emphasis on education and tours and those type of things and then i'll just end that uh, nebraska grazing land is doing a tour on june 27th in southeast nebraska we're going to start in sprague martell you're going to see a lot of advertising go out but why I think this is important is because this tour is gonna to be all about the urban rural connect and about ag telling our story and about trying to get the urban people at the table and asking them what, what do they want? What are their needs and how, why are we important to them? We'll end the day with a panel discussion. Um, uh, Dr. Bain will moderate it. We will have Homer Buell on the panel. We will have Senator Myron Dorn on the panel. We will have uh, Senator Carol Blood on the panel. So we're trying to do this rural urban. And then we have a lady by the name of Nancy Williams from Omaha, which is the executive director of No, no More Empty Pots. And again, just trying to tell our story in ag. And I think if, if you can work that into your grants and stuff, I think that's key. So I appreciate your time. Uh, thank you for what you're doing. I, I think this is a very, very good uh, phone conference today. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, yeah, just a, a comment, I guess, you know, interesting on, on giving uh, priority points for educational um, we have actually done some of that with our demo farms. Um, and so that's a concept that we can definitely talk about, you know, moving forward, you know, doing some demo farm type of things. And uh, yeah, so good, great, great comments, Tim. Thanks. Thanks for uh, giving us that. Who's, the, who's on the bottom? I can't read her name. Oh, I believe Shelly Kelly was next. Okay, Shelly, you're next. Okay, Shelly, go ahead. Hi, I'm Shelley Kelly. I'm the executive director for the Sand Hills Task Force. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to give comments and to gather us all up. Uh, my biggest concern that I have about all these dollars, actually, maybe I should start with how excited I am that we're getting these extra dollars to Nebraska. Uh, good work for all of you in advocating for Nebraska and in getting the dollars to come. Um, taking the time to spend the dollars wisely and consider it is, is so wise. And I just thank you for getting us together. But a concern that I have is with this climate smart focus, we're missing out on some of the other natural resource concerns that we have in the state. And in taking advantage of, of the IRA money, uh, it, it makes sense that they have a very specific focus. But the question that I had was, is there something that we can do with general equip and, and some of the other allocation dollars to prioritize the things that aren't prioritized with IRA money. Um, the specific thing that I think of, of course, is Eastern Red Cedar um, with McC removal and prescribed burning. And those aren't classified as climate smart practices. They're classified as classes, but 
boy, if, if we don't have them in place, we're going to lose our natural ecosystems uh, that do a good job to help us with carbon sequestration and being climate smart. And so I bet you've had some of those conversations already, uh, but I just wanted to to bring it up again right now to make sure that we aren't we aren't forgetting about the other natural resources that this this money uh, isn't going to be able to target. Yeah, no, the great, great comment, Shelley. Uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, we need to look at, at what we're doing with our general equip and and CSP Classic. Uh, maybe we can can shift some emphasis in, in places. And that's all part of this discussion. So thanks for bringing that up. In regards to uh, the Red Cedar situation, uh, 528 uh, grazing management is is a core practice. And then as part of the facilitating practice, we will be able to do brush management, uh, prescribed burns, and 597, uh, you know, with our facilitating practices. And I, I think that would, that definitely hits the goals of, uh, you know, the G GPGI areas and and that so um, just a comment not that we can't do more but but as as we uh, we're getting more information about that uh, I think we will be able to address a lot of those red cedar concerns and and some of the grazing lands concerns out there so yeah so thank you for that Shelley anything else well that's that's great news. I didn't know that they were considered um, supporting practices. That's that's really exciting, and I'm glad that those dollars can be directed that way. And of course, that would that would apply to both uh, the general equip general and and the IRA. So um, kind of a double double shot at it there. So so that's good. Okay, who's next, Connor? I'm um, Kate Hansen. Kate Hansen. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Kate Hansen with the Center for Rural Affairs, uh, kind of subbing in for my colleague Kaylee Olson here today. Um, but I want to echo what Shelley said. I think this is really exciting for the state. And it kind of sounds like we're in the business of spreading the word right now. And I had two questions relating to that. Uh, one is, you know, we work with producers that sometimes feel maybe a little frustrated if they didn't get into CSP or Equip the first time, and we're just talking a whole different set of money here. Is there any way to reach out to folks that haven't made it in previously, haven't been accepted into the programs and say, hey, you've got another shot? And B, is there any discussion happening about FSA spreading the word or just like other agencies playing a part uh, to try to get some of those producers that haven't previously applied for NRCS programs. So those are kind of my two questions. Yeah, that's that's very good. And I'll let others weigh in here too, but uh, I think that's exactly the part of the outreach uh, part of this that we need to put together. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. How do we go about reaching back out to those folks who might think that they they don't have a, a shot at it. Um, some things that we've kicked around, uh, you know, there's some direct mailings that have gone out on different programs. Uh, you know, different, I mean, door to door, uh, different things, uh, news releases. I mean, I think everything's on the table uh, as far as that goes. Any ideas that that you or the center would would have? Uh, to how to reach these folks. I think we're all ears. And, and uh, you know, FSA is definitely, you know, a part of this. And, you know, we can utilize their resources, uh, probably should and will, uh, to reach out. Um, you know, the urban ag is is now a big, a big part of uh, uh, our programs these days. And urban, the small scale urban ag definitely uh, can benefit you know, from the IRA, some of these IRA practices, if only because now we have some some general funds, equip general funds that that might be able to be redirected. And so, yeah, all of that's on the table. Um, that's uh, definitely, I mean, 
we don't we don't have all the answers yet. So any ideas that you have, you know, send them in and and uh, we'll see what we can do. And that's all part of the outreach as far as I'm concerned to reach them people. Yeah, no, thanks for that. Anything else, Kate? No, I don't think so. I'm glad that that this discussion is happening and, and we'll spend some time to put some ideas on paper and hopefully send them in. That sounds great. Thank you. OK, who's next? Uh, Kendall Boningberger. Kendall. Can you Kendall? hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Kendall Boningberger. I'm with Environmental Sciences out of Wisner. We are actually a accredited third party verifier of carbon credits um, nationally and internationally. Um, as far as some of the sequestration is NRCS reaching out to say Treasury or DOE with regards to eligibility for 45 Q credits. With regards to sequestration of carbon dioxide. Oh, uh, that's that's a great question, Kendall. I don't have that answer, um, but. You know, and I guess I'd say to everybody, if, if you could summarize your comments and requests and send them in, you know, we're trying to capture what we can here, but. That's a good question, Kendall. I, I don't have that answer. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll sure make sure we get that up the line and ask. Because we are actually reaching out and submitting proposal to DOE. Um, for pre-approval for carbon sequestration um, as far as manure application and some other things. Um, my company is already working with DOE regarding that and Treasury as far as eligibility. Um, and I didn't know if some people were going to do things via NRCS, if that was going to be eligible not only with you, but as far as the tax credit. Or if that was double dipping and not allowed. Yeah, the good questions. Um, uh, right, any. yeah, I think at this point we'll we'll capture the question because, you know, as it stands right now, we don't have that answer on if it would be classified double dipping. You know, what we do is we're using our existing programs to, um, you know, whether that's EQIP, CSP, RCPP, or ASAP uh, to focus on through the IRA. So it's, so we don't have any, uh, you know, right now, currently, if I tell me if I'm wrong, Brad, but right now we, we're not in the we we're not we don't have a practice or tied into the carbon uh, carbon market practice as an example. So uh, that's uh, we're using our existing programs and practices right now. Because I have have clients that are getting equip funding. If they would they be eligible to go ahead and do 45 Q2 or not? If they are getting equip money from you because i've gotten that question quite a few questions quite a few times we'll have to elevate that because i can't tell you that today um exactly so we'll have to elevate that question up the line and and see specifically if um, if that's the case yeah the other thing is it's good to have outreach um we've met with a lot of people that don't know what's in an inflation reduction act or as far as a lot of the different practices and stuff that you can qualify for. So the more outreach we do, um, better off a lot of people are going to be. So thank you for doing that. And that was, I guess, all I had. Great, thank you. OK, uh, John Hansen, looks like you're next. Very good. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, two kind of basic uh, questions. One is, uh, as and I think outreach is is really important. I just pulled an article down today out of the uh, Milwaukee Journal Sentinel uh, that was really good about all the additional money, once in a lifetime money's coming to Wisconsin, and you know what all of that means. And uh, my counterpart there, uh, his his concern was whether or not the word was going to get out to farmers and in, uh, in time. For them to understand the opportunities that they have so that they could take advantage of these programs and so uh, the outreach part um, it helps folks like me if i've got some bullet points of basics 
relative to what it is that we want people to do, what is available, uh, and kind of some of those things so that we can kind of put it in our own organization speak language and uh, get it out there so that it's a, uh, it's also technically accurate. So that we're the last thing we want to do is to create the confusion. Uh, so if if you've got some bullet points that uh, you can circulate that way, we're a little bit more likely to be on the same page, uh, which would be helpful. And then uh, switching back to my state uh, committee hat, uh, looking at that and the meeting we have coming up, uh, the thought has uh, crossed my mind several times and several of my board members have brought this up. So if we bring in all this additional funding, then how much of that will also get uh, and the priorities for it, how much of that will sort of go through the state uh, technical committee uh, review and uh, will will it be possible, for example, for us to be able to take a look at uh, some way to prioritize where uh, you know some of the money goes or some of the money could be replaced or some of the money could be augmented, uh, kind of looking ahead, cheating, looking ahead to the June meeting. Uh, what are we fixing to do there or can do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great questions, uh, John, and comments. So um, first on, on the outreach, uh, I, I jotted that down and and that, that's a great idea that we get some bullet points out and talking points and those kind of things. Uh, there, there is a lot of information that you probably know if you go to the NRCS website, IRA. Um, there's a number of fact sheets available there. Um, we'll, we can try to try to get those uh, uh, summarized maybe and do some of that. But that might be part of the outreach is just letting people know where to go find the information. Uh, but uh, I couldn't agree more that uh, organizations like yours and others, you know, if they're out there promoting, you know, that can only help. And, and we want to make sure that all the facts are correct. So, so good, good there. Um, and then as far as the funding, the prioritizing that. Um, so yes, I, I wasn't really planning to do uh, the funds allocations at June, but I, I probably can uh, go over that. So, so we do have a, an allocation formula that that we use to distribute the funds. And uh, part of that is, is uh, taking funds and putting them into our different funding pools. And, uh, you know, IRA is, is handled separately, you know, from the funding uh, from our farm bill funds. And that's actually part of, I didn't put that bullet point up, but one of the things we're discussing is, is how to go about allocating those funds for IRA. You know, it's a little bit different, you know, as far as the resource concerns and that. We have a resource-based allocation formula for our Equip General, and uh, that would need some tweaking, I think, for the IRA funds. But yes, absolutely, then that will be uh, reviewed at the State Technical Committee uh, probably finalized at September, but we would need to have some of these discussions before then. So um, if uh, if you have some thoughts on that, uh, on where we need to target the IRA funds, you know, uh, if you don't have the current list of climate smart ag forestry practices, we can, you know, get you a copy of that. But the, yes, that's that's part of, we've, we've even started those discussions this week uh, here on, uh, you know, tweaking our allocation formula. What can we do? Do we have two allocation formulas or how that's going to work? So, so thanks for bringing that up, John. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot that we can do there. Uh, we have some flexibility on how we allocate those funds within the state. And uh, so if, if any thoughts from, from anyone here, uh, I would be glad to hear them. And, uh, and then we can go to work with revising our allocations process or however that goes so uh, yeah 
good recommendation. Anything else, John? No, I think that's I think I I put enough grist into the mill there. But as uh, as I was looking at this, this is a pretty good sized project uh, for the for anybody to take a look at and say, okay, uh, it's similar but not exactly the same. How do we try to, you know, uh, although we've got a different focus, how do we allocate these monies in the in the the best, most productive and uh, appropriate and effective way? Uh, especially given the you know the really dramatic difference in in uh, resource uh, bases that we have from the east to the west end of the state, and that's always you know one of my concerns is that if, you know you know if we're just doing it for what works back home, that might be great for what's back home, but uh, you know it's a very different back home when you are looking at it from Banner County or uh, the west end of the state and what works. And the east end of the state is oftentimes just very different. So we got our work cut out for us. Yep, no, yeah, definitely. Do. Hey, thank you, John. Uh, Andy, Andy Bishop. I just want to say congratulations. That's a this is a game changer for conservation, and I think it's going to take all of us to get it on the ground. And I'm excited that we're looking at this through a, a partnership lens. You know, with the communication, you know, we've got some staff that could help. I mean, that's something that a lot of agencies don't have the outreach people, but we do have a shared position that we could help with postcards or letters and doing some of the GIS to identify individuals, owner operators to help help with your outreach. Um, more than happy to, to try to coordinate with you. And we've, we've done that in the past for some of the grassland work. Um, the ASEP, you know, that's a huge pot of money for easements and and, and I think we all know the drought makes selling wetland easements pretty hard. I think we're going to need to get to the one on one just because easements are so different than an equip contract that, you know, we've done so much outreach, at least in the rainwater basins and central table playas and in some of these other areas that people know about it. But it's uh, the nuances of the 100 steps and 18 months to get it closed. And so if there's opportunities to do some more outreach or you know, kind of that one on one with producers that might be interested in wetland easements, you know, I'd, I'd be more than happy to try to facilitate that as well. But I'm pretty excited. This is going to be a game changer for conservation, at least for the, the next decade. Yeah. Yeah, very good, Andy. And, and I, I will definitely uh, uh, second the fact that we've, we've gotten a lot of Good uh, coordinated coordinated efforts with Rainwater Basin and your group, Andy, and thank you for all of that. And uh, I think we've seen the results of those direct mailings and that uh, and GPGI and other things. So uh, we got we got some good examples to go off of there. So so thanks for that offer, Andy. Okay, anything else, Andy? Nope. Thank you. Okay. Um, who's got their hand up? I think John's is a, a fossilized hand. I think he's, unless you had something else, John. John, did you have anything else? Your hand is still up, but if not. Um, well, we got the phones that unmuted themselves. So I don't know if they have something to say as well. Was that Mike? Okay, no, no, I guess just the. Okay. Okay, well, um, yeah, if, if anybody has anything else, uh, you know, raise your hand or just go ahead and unmute at this point and give us your comments. Just a quick follow up from Tim, you know, on the very first comment, Tim, you mentioned, um, you know, with the drought situation and the interceding into fields or deferred grazing and you know we're we've been talking this week about how can we in, you know try to incorporate that that grain or small small grain uh into the rotation so those are conversations we just had earlier this week tim so um definitely you know with the drought situation and keeping getting forage for the livestock that's definitely on our minds as well so wanted to share that with you Thank you. I, 
just using us as an example, you know, our stocking rate was at 75% last year. It's probably going to be that again this year. And just everything is stressed and people are trying to produce feed. We planted over 100 pounds of per acre of cover crop seed last year, you know, over two, two different times, and not once did it come up. You know, it's just, and so we're not, you know, the ground isn't covered. We're not taking in that carbon. I mean, it, there's just a lot of benefits to that, I think. So I, I appreciate that. Thank you. But yeah, any last last call, if you will, I really appreciate the feedback. You know, this is that this is exactly what we needed here in, in from our perspective, from NRCS's perspective to have it have this opportunity to have a conversation, get feedback from you all. Uh, this is going to help us prepare for the the next the the formal scheduled state tech committee meeting coming up here in a few weeks and on June 8th in the afternoon. So that's going to be that's very helpful. Uh, we're going to continue the dialogue discussion uh, through throughout. You know, I just got to echo and Brad said this already, but you know, we really take value in what the local work groups say each each and every year. We uh, had our leadership team in here this week, and we're I, the, all the staffs are digging into the comments from the local work group. So that's that's you know that's the at the ground level that those comments that's what we take we take feedback from the the subcommittees that are out there under the state tech committee that get elevated up to this main committee the state tech committee so we uh, there's different avenues to to be able to share feedback and we really appreciate the time you've taken with us this afternoon any any final thoughts Brad, any final thoughts? Yeah, well, the only the only thing uh, I, we would appreciate it if if even if it's just a few bullet points or thoughts or that, um, if you could send them to us, we want to make we want to make sure we don't miss anything. And uh, I mean, these are all good recommendations, things we would like. So uh, we'll capture what we can, you know, from uh, the meeting here in our notes. But if, if you wouldn't mind, you know, it would be helpful, even an email and say, hey, you know, here's here's a few things we'd like you to consider or thoughts. Um, and it doesn't need to be anything fancy or, or in depth, but uh, that that would be that would be good. That'd be appreciated. So uh, I really appreciate your input and uh, it's going to take everybody uh, to get this uh, get this applied. You know, they're, they're talking about some big numbers coming down the line and we just need to be ready to to uh, implement that, you know, in the best way possible here in the state. Connor, do you we want to put Tammy or someone want to put Tammy's email address in the chat for everyone? That would be I think that would be a great. So if you have specific um, specific bullet points like uh, like Brad mentioned, um, Tammy's uh, email will go in the chat here and uh, you can send them directly to to Tammy to combine them um, for the as uh, for the for the state tech committee and uh, that would be great. But um, definitely, you know, this is kind of perfect timing, so to speak, when you when we have we're having this and then we've got a few weeks to to stew on it, if you will, before the the uh, next uh, scheduled state tech committee on June 8th. So that it's actually good timing to get this out, have uh, have time to think through it, um, and then also uh, come come with any thoughts on June 8th as well. So thank you, Brad. Thank you, Connor, Tammy in the in here at the state office. And thank you all for your participation today. Again, we really value it, value the feedback. So thank you and have a good good rest of your Thursday afternoon.